And we'll do a little math, not a whole lot because it's the first day and I know you're getting settled, but just also not a whole lot because it seems like maybe our pen is missing. I think it's right under there. Is that what's hanging down there? Ah, it is, thank you. So trigonometry, I guess trigonometry, the way we're going to do it anyway, we'll start by looking at right triangles. Then we'll see how the right triangle definitions can be applied to other situations that don't involve triangles at all, like the rising of the tides or, you know, the, the temperature over the course of a year. There are a lot of sort of natural patterns where things rise and fall and rise again and fall again can be studied using the tools of trigonometry. But we're at least starting with triangles. And if we're going to start with triangles, then that means starting with angles. So an angle is formed when two line segments, two rays, I guess is the formal word, meet at some point. You know? We can have two rays meeting and we can ask, well, are these rays close together? Are they far apart? And the answer to that question is given as an angle. So an angle is a measure of how close or how far apart those rays are. So here is a small angle compared to this, which is a bigger angle. The rays are closer on the left, they're further apart on the right. So angles have three parts, essentially. I mean, there are two rays meeting at a point. So that's one ray, another ray, and a point three parts in all. The point is called the vertex. The same terminology that we used in college algebra when we were looking at quadratic equations. And then these rays that are forming this angle. One of those rays is called the initial ray. The other is the terminal ray, or the initial side and the terminal side. The word side is a little weird, you know, side of what, but it's pretty standard. And if you just have a picture and nothing else, you can't really tell what the initial side is and what the terminal side is. But if you looked at this angle, you'd probably think of that as the initial side. and that as the terminal side. And the difference between the initial and the terminal side is the difference between having a positive or a negative angle. Let's look at two angles where we have our vertex there, and then we have a horizontal initial side.
if the terminal side is up there, and that's the angle we are looking at, the angle is positive. If the terminal side is down here, and this is the angle that we're looking at, that angle is negative. And you notice this, this notation, and these sort of arcs I've been drawing in, that notation is necessary because you could take one of these angles, you could take that angle, say, you could say, well, what if this is our initial side? And instead of going down like that and reaching the terminal side that way, what if instead of doing that, we went all the way around and got to the terminal side that way? Now well, that would make this angle now positive. If you go from the initial side to the terminal side via clock is motion, the angle is negative. If you go to from the initial side to the terminal side by your counter clockwise motion, the angle is positive. So going back here, if we go from the initial to the terminal side in that counterclockwise way, it's a positive angle. Initial to terminal in a counterclockwise way, a positive angle. Initial to terminal in a from initial to terminal in a clockwise way, that's a negative angle. But if you went from initial to terminal in a counterclockwise way, that would be a positive angle. So these little sort of arcs that we draw, we don't always draw the angle. If we don't draw the angle, we kind of assume that everything is positive. I mean, we don't always draw the arrow, but that's there to tell you what the angle is. It's so that this angle, where we go from initial to terminal in a counterclockwise way, And this angle, where we go from initial to terminal in a clockwise way, can be distinguished. If you didn't have that, if you just had the vertex and the rays, those angles would look identical. Questions about this? Then, so this is called plane trigonometry, plane as in the Cartesian plane. So for a lot of this class, 
We're going to assume that the angle is on the Cartesian plane. We've got this vertex, it's a point on the Cartesian plane. We've got these rays, they're red line segments essentially on the Cartesian plane. And an angle is said to be in its standard form if the vertex is at the origin and the x-axis, the positive half of the x-axis is the initial side. So if we have an angle like that with that vertex, that initial side, and then whatever our terminal side is. This is an angle in standard form. Now, I've said that an angle is a measurement of how far the initial side and the terminal side are from each other. Small angle, large angle. What must probably be clear, I mean, especially clear, because you've definitely seen angles before at some point in your mathematical career, is that at some point, if you get further and further away from each other, you'll go all the way around and wind up back where you started. That mess with my hands probably wasn't a very clear picture. But if you've got your initial side there, and you look at that angle, okay, the initial side and the terminal side form an angle. Now you could look at, let's change up our color just a little. You could look at that. Okay, the initial side and the terminal side form an angle. And we could look at this, the initial side and the terminal side form an angle. And although the angle is getting bigger and bigger, those two sides are getting closer and closer together now. Until eventually, you get a situation where the initial side and the terminal side are the same. This is a very significant fact, as a matter of fact. Um, what I've said, well, we'll see why it's so significant later. For now, let's just remind ourselves or learn for the first time, but probably remind ourselves that a way of measuring the size of these angles is degree. So degree is a unit of angle measurement. It's a number and then followed by that symbol, an open circle to the upper right. If that is our initial side, then a 90 degree angle looks like that. a 180-degree angle looks like that.
a 270 degree angle looks like that. And finally, if we go all the way around, so that our initial and our terminal side are the same, that is 360 degrees. And we summarize this by saying that there are 360 degrees angle, um, that there are 360 degrees in a circle. I mean, we haven't, we don't see any circle on the whiteboard at the moment. We will draw a circle a little later in the course. But for now, that's how we sort of make this observation. 360 degrees in a circle. And I guess I said we don't see any circles on the whiteboard, but we we sort of do. If our, if our initial and terminal side are the same, and we start here, we go all the way around, we wind up back, and there's a circle. Hence that phrase. Um, in this picture, all of the angles were positive. We normally work pretty usually with positive angles if we can, if we have a choice. But we can draw also, you know, here is our initial side and. We can go to our terminal side via clockwise movement. So now our angle is going to be negative. Clockwise is negative. Negative 90 degrees. So in this picture, we see angles that are less than 360 degrees. So I didn't draw a zero degree angle, but a zero degree angle would visually look the same as a 360 degree angle in the sense that the initial side and the terminal side are the same. It's just that when you have a zero degree angle, no motion has occurred. The terminal side hasn't moved. With a 360 degree angle, we've gone all the way around the circle and we've come back to that position. So purely in terms of where the initial side and the terminal side are, a zero degree angle and a 360 degree angle look the same. Same vertex, same initial side, same terminal side. That's another reason for this notation here. In the sense that if we draw this arrow, it's clear that we're drawing a 360 degree angle instead of a zero degree angle. Now, we've seen angles from zero degrees to 360 degrees, but if we think of having, you know, this initial side and then the terminal side is moving around and forming angles, there's no reason we shouldn't go 360 degrees and then keep going. So we can have angles that are bigger than or less than, or 
of course, vests, but we can have angles that are bigger than 360 degrees, like We can have a 370 degree angle. And let's think about what a 370 degree angle in the standard form would look like. So we've got our Cartesian plane. We've got the initial side on the x-axis, because it's a standard form. 370 degrees is a positive number, so we're looking at counterclockwise motion. Start here, we go 360 degrees, and then we go another 10 degrees. To reach 307. And again, to make this visually clear. You can show that we go all the way around and then a little more to reach 370 degrees. That notation makes it clear that we've gone all of the way around and are looking at a 370 degree angle as opposed to that which is what we draw if we had a 10 degree angle. Because again, if you just look at the vertex, the initial side and the terminal side, a 10 degree angle and a 370 degree angle look the same. They've got the same vertex and the same size. Definition, two angles are co-terminal if they have the same vertex initial side and terminal side. You might notice in the word how would terminal, well, terminal for terminal side, but they have to have the same initial side too. And the reason for this naming is that we normally assume, again, that these angles are in standard position. So we're normally not worrying about the initial side because we're assuming the initial side is the x-axis and any two angles have the same initial side. In fact, I mean, probably the textbook says something like this. Two angles in the standard position are co-terminal if they have 
the same terminal side. And there's no contradiction here, because if two angles are in the standard position, they have the same vertex automatically, so you don't need to mention it. And they have the same initial side automatically, so you don't have to mention that. So most of the time, if we're working with angles, we want to work with angles that are positive and between zero and 360 degrees. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions to that, but I'd say at least nine times out of 10, we don't want to work with angles of 370 degrees. We want to say, well, this looks like a 10 degree angle. Let's use 10 degrees instead. If an angle is greater than 360 degrees, you can find a co-terminal angle between zero and 360. The method is not very elegant. You just keep subtracting 360 until you get a number between zero and 360. I feel like there should be, if you do, if you divide by 360, the remainder should be it. There are probably more elegant ways of doing this, but this is what's in the textbook. So it's what I'll present to you. I mean, if we looked, at 370 degrees, a few frames back, I looked at this angle and I said, well, this looks like a 10 degree angle. And I treated that as if it was obvious, maybe it wasn't obvious, but all I was doing was I took 370. I said, well, it's bigger than 360. So to find this coterminal angle, we'll subtract. And the coterminal angle was 10 degrees. I had 1,000. 62 degrees. Let's see, did I get this? Oh, I did indeed. 1062 minus 360, still too big. Minus 360 again, 342. So we just keep subtracting until we get an angle between zero and 360. Notice that I'm very careful 
to write this degree symbol down. And this isn't just me being picky. Very shortly, as in tomorrow, we're going to learn an alternate way of measuring angles called the radian. And the way you look at an angle and know, is this in degrees or is this in radians, is just to look for the degree symbol. If it's there, you're in degrees. If it's not, you're in radians. So it's very, if you are working with degrees, it's very important to say if you're working with degrees. Um, for negative angles, if we want a coterminal angle between zero and 360 degrees, then we can add 360 degrees instead of subtracting, like negative, Seventy-two degrees. That must be somewhere. I don't know. Something like that. It's um. It's seventy-two is less than ninety. A negative ninety degree angle would be there. So maybe that's about right. to get a coterminal angle that is not negative, we add 360 degrees. We get 288 is the angle you get if you go in the clock counterclockwise instead of the clockwise fashion. Hey, one last brief comment. Maybe you're already familiar with this, or, but maybe you're not. Say we have the Cartesian plane. The x-axis and the y-axis. You notice that these axes cut the plane into four pieces. An upper right piece, an upper left piece, a lower left piece, a lower right piece. Those pieces are called the quadrants. And I feel like this sometimes gets taught to students in like an algebra class, and then they, they don't really use the quadrants for anything. So it's one of those learn it and forget it type deals. Trigonometry is where the quadrants become important. We'll often ask ourselves, where is this terminal side of an angle? Which quadrant is it pointing off into? And the quadrants are number one through four. They're traditionally denoted lowercase. And I mean, not lowercase, what am I saying? Using Roman numerals. And they go counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. And the reason they go counterclockwise is that we're usually looking at positive angles. And positive angles go counterclockwise. 
clockwise. So we start in the first quadrant, as the size of the angle increases, we go into the second quadrant, uh, then as it increases further into the third quadrant, as it increases further into the fourth quadrant. And that brings us almost exactly to the end of class. Does anybody have any last minute questions about any of the material from today? Then I will see you same time, same place on Wednesdays.